coming out of a Sharks game. We were at the Caltrain station by HP Pavilion. I've been talking to Paul. I uh, didn't know him, but we were sitting there and I was moaning about how they'd made us switch trains and he leaned over and said, oh man, I, I sure hope they don't make us do it again. And moments later, I started hearing some gurgling sounds and I looked over and he was laying on his back and kind of looked at the people next to us, what's going on? And after a few seconds, uh, me and a volunteer firefighter stepped forward and we started kind of checking the ABCs and we were seeing, oh, he's not breathing, that's for sure. He's turning colors already and uh, we're not getting a very good pulse here. So that's when we decided it'd probably be a good time to start doing CPR. <laughs> um, I, I did the mouth to mouth for five minutes and the volunteer firefighter did the compressions for five minutes and then someone else stepped forward and rotated us and I rotated out. The volunteer firefighter started doing the mouth to mouth and the new guy that stepped in started doing the compressions. I worked on trying to get a police officer to come over, uh, tried to make sure that uh, Brandon, his grandson, was getting taken care of. Police officer came over, started taking care of Brandon, paramedics showed up shortly thereafter and started, they took over, so I, I stepped out and got on the train, last train of the night. The only t I only started kind of processing what was going on after I rotated out, because I was just standing there watching all this, kind of taking the whole thing in. On the train, I could see him shocking Paul, but it didn't look like he was responding or getting up or anything. And so I was thinking, leaving the, leaving the train station that night, that it hadn't gone very well. They'd given him three shocks, I believe. And it was the third, the third that got your heart pumping again, I thought. Um, glad it turned out the way it did.